Twitch always kills me with the delay. What's the good? Not Twitch. Oh, wow. Yep. I just called YouTube Twitch. This is going to be telling of today, and I haven't even really been drinking. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mouse Clicks and Joystick. Episode number three. Three. I am here three. with my co host, Eurostrix, a.k.a. the man of too many goddamn names for y'all to remember. Oh, yeah, just, just call him whatever one. he tells you to. Just, just, just remember, like, any one of the, of the names that. Whatever the per- first name you hear, just go with that. What's going on, everybody? All right, so let's get into this week. We have actually a ton of stuff starting to come out, and I feel like this is going to be the way it's going to be up until June. Yep. When um, E3, you know, you're going to start getting a ton of leaks and announcements and things rolling out. Um, first topic. By the way, before we get into the topics, actually, what have you been up to this week? Dark Souls deals. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching your I played, stream. I played 15 hours of that in three days, I think. Yeah. And then I've reinstalled Destiny, started uh, the uh, quest line for the DLC that I bought but never played. Have and... you started um, Rise of Iron yet? Yes. I started... Uh, Last thing I did was I did like the first two missions, I think. Okay. Oh man, I should get on and play the last mission with you. I love that mission. That uh, is like it is what they should have been doing with the fucking um final missions all along. Uh, but, uh, that uh, we had, and then beyond that, player unknown battles player unknowns battleground finally popped into early access. Um which is really funny because I find myself thinking back to where I said I never bought early access games, and that was true up until like two years ago. And I have since bought a lot more, but that is uh, probably the one of the best um, uh, battle royale esque games, um, especially with what am I thinking of? Especially since the creator of Player Unknown, Player Unknown is the person that originally created the mod for Arma. Uh, and this is kind of his vision and his own game. So that's been cool. I think those are the three main games. Beyond that, I've played a few indie games, three, three, <coughs> three things here and there. Uh, but nothing, nothing major. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, well, I've been playing the Be Pissed at People game. It's a great, wonderful um, life simulation. Very realistic. I mean, you can... Practically, as you can find, you know, yeah. Oh my god, like 4K TVs have nothing <laughs> on the visuals you get from this game. I mean, it's like the people are standing in your face, pissing you the fuck off, making you want to smack the shit out of them. It's that realistic, damn. I tell you. Um, and some people have been virtually making me want to smack them, but I can't because it's hard to smack someone through a damn computer. Um, one being my professor. Uh, so long story short, had a lab to do, and I was fighting for five hours to do it, but I couldn't get through it because it was just one error that kept popping up in the syntax. And I had no idea how to fix it because it wasn't in the structure at all. Mm-hmm. So screen cap the error, email my teacher, let them know, yo, this is what I'm getting. I'm, I'm at a loss. And I can't turn to my lab because I can't proceed past this point to get the screen caps that I need to send you. So get home today. And he emails me the answer key to the lab. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, you got the answers. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) So what does that teach me? How to ask your teacher for the answers. <laughs> I didn't ask him for the answers. I was asking him, like, does he know what this error might be? And is there a possible um, direction? Because I even Googled it. The everything. answer to your question may not be the answer you seek. Okay. And see, <laughs> if he would have really came with some Zen-like shit like that, <laughs> I would have been like, well, the feeling of my foot in your ass may not be <laughs> feeling that you want right now okay <laughs> so i'm gonna need you to actually give me a real answer god damn it 
<laughs> but I, I would just love him just to, just to go in there. Oh yeah, you're you're missing a bracket. Yeah, sorry. But I, I kind of have an idea, but it's like the fix that I found was for a different line of code. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you? And I'm wondering if it would work on program. this, huh? Did you try redoing the entire program? You'd be surprised how many times I've done that and it just works. Yeah, I've done. I restarted it like five times. Oh, wow. Um, about that then. Yeah, it's. I'm not gonna even. I don't even want to know because that's it's a particular thing. Things to do. No, it's about FTP servers. Um, yeah. It's like to log on bullshit and send something. It won't let me log on because it keeps saying like it doesn't recognize the users that. We were told to create um, because of a line in a part of the damn code we were told not to touch. Programming, everybody. But it's like, um, I'm going to need to touch this motherfucker because this is thing is killing me. Yep. So. Programming, everybody. Fuck it. Yeah. I know. I know. Open source programming. That does Linux. Well, that game, uh, that game it sounds great, though. It so was. It that everybody kept me, will eventually play. You know, that along with eight page papers about how great Linux is and all that kept I mean, me from. Just, I mean, huh? get his name so I never ever end up in his class, even. Yeah, I, for real. I, like, I, shit. Linux is fine. Well, we, I'm not going to even get into a Linux and get people in the discussion. You just don't know how great Linux is. I know how great Linux is. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, but uh, um so yeah, that's me. I haven't really played much that much. Um played a little bit of Mass Effect. Um I actually put in quite a bit of hours in that game. And I don't see why people think it's horrific. I can see why people don't think it's great. It's anti hype culture. Yeah. If something's hyped, it also has to be anti-hyped of an equal or greater proportion. I guess, because I mean, it's, it's also, more Mass Effect. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this to Do not go... I, I said, I've said this before, probably. Don't go to people who like are fans of a game, like the biggest fans of a game, for opinions on a game. Because <clears throat> it's really hard for people to be unbiased of their favorite games of all time. This is true. Like... I probably will never talk about. I could play a Kingdom Hearts game, and I'm paid sixty bucks for like a four-hour, essentially tech demo for the next Kingdom Hearts game, and enjoyed it. I was like, "Yep, I enjoyed that money I spent." Even though, like, there are plenty of issues that I could probably call out, but just things like that. And also, just because you don't like a game doesn't make it bad. <clears throat> Be happy, everybody. Oh. Play the games. Again, the things that I that most people are calling out, I just don't get it's like again the animation thing um it's really not that bad it's horrible black it makes the game unplayable <laughs> you know glitches okay they're fixing them and they fix them plus um they weren't that bad either uh no but they make the game they made the game unplayable i put it in once and it didn't work and therefore the game should never be played yeah but see that's the thing it's not even a glitch like that it's just like People crab walking or doing like weird pop ins. But it happened on day one when the game came out, and I should not have to ever deal with that. So I'm never touching the game. Oh, well. day, day, day patches. <laughs> what ifs? But you dare play a Ubisoft game. Uh, but, and I just then, don't of course, complain about patches and then be mad when, like, don't complain about not getting patches and then when they patch an issue, refuse to play the game because they took too long to patch it. That's that's not an or they they should have had this figured out before launch. Like, you can say that play the game; it, it works now. Please, we're getting into completely side topics that have nothing to do with yeah the, the other designated topics. And of course, story was the other thing, but I don't find that I actually think the story is a little more intriguing than anything they've done previously because I don't honestly know exactly where they're going. Whereas with oh. the other math effects, I kind of pretty much can see mm. where shit was going. Because it was, you know, hey, you got to stop the Reapers. Stop the Reapers. I think that's what I'm personally waiting on. 
It's like I'm just letting all the hype and everything die down to a lot of these games, and I'll go back and play them later. Yeah, I have them, and that's just one of those things that I know I want to get through them. They're also all long games for the most part. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem because between that and Horizons. Horizon, and then still playing, Pers- if you had ne- yep, Personas tomorrow. Neo uh, was yeah. back in February as well, and that was supposed to be like thirty plus hours to be. Yeah. And it's stuff like that where it's just like. I don't need a 30 plus hour game every single month. I'm one of those people that I did not agree when people are like, games need to be longer. I don't need games to no, be long just don't. to be long. If there's a purpose to the length, fine. Yeah, exactly. But please don't pad our games. I am perfectly fine with a well created, but uh, tight and well um, thought out 10 hour campaign, 12 hour campaign. You do not yeah. need to go like, like 15, 20, 30, 40 hours. No. Because inevitably, there's usually something that's just kind of like filler work. Mm-hmm. Except maybe in the case of Horizons. Or Neo. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far in the game, so I can't say. Oh, I know somebody who's like got 90 hours in that game. Oh, Jesus. Dude, what you doing? Just up. But, um, Speaking let's... of 90 hours, a game that I have 200 in, <laughs> and I mentioned that I was recently getting back into got a sequel announced, didn't it? Really? Who would ever think that Activision's new cash cow after Call of Duty is starting to die down would get a sequel? I didn't think you put that much time in that game. Who, what, Destiny? Yeah, I really didn't. Black, black. I played like 40 to 60 hours every time a new DLC came out. Like every time that first week, I put in like a good 40 hours. Like when Oryx came out, I put in, I believe, 60 hours when Oryx's DLC came out. Um, And yeah, yeah, I have have like 150, 200 hours in Destiny. It's why whenever somebody tried to say, why would you spend 100 bucks in total or however much I spent on the game? I'm like, because I played the game for 100, 200 hours. It's I think that's the it. most important thing. Like, if you get your money's worth out of it, dude. I'm not even. I'm not even somebody that evaluates games like that. But playing a game for 200 hours, I can't argue of not getting my money's worth out of the game. Yeah. And the DLC. God, I haven't looked at my and legend in a while. You making me look. Man. Even with that all said, there's content I haven't done in that 200 hours. There's plenty of content that I haven't done. I know. Um, but with that said, Destiny 2 did get announced, even though it was teased uh, or good leaked. fucking lord. Leaked. Yeah, don't don't yeah, don't look at those numbers. No, I'm looking at just like my stats on my hunter. No, and that's that's the actual issue. They do it by character. So I can tell you I have a hundred plus hours on my Titan. And that's and before like you start I said, to um, about You kind of lightweight. I can only imagine what SB has, because good lord. Okay, yeah, so I, we're I, gonna I, go just over this really quickly for me. Yeah. This is how much this game like took my life. So for I have all three characters, all at level forty. They're not maxed out in yeah. light, but I'm close. I'm at three eighty two with my hunter, three eighty one with my titan, three eighty seven with my uh, warlock, and I'm sure if I switch things around. That'll change, and everybody else will bump up even more. Okay, so for Hunter, it says time played, 12 days, 3 hours, 5 minutes. So 24 times 10 is 240. Add another 48 hours to that, so 300 hours, essentially. Okay, that's just one character. (laughs) (laughs) See, like, that's what I always emphasize to people is, like, oh, yeah, I can move it over to my Titan. This is the lowest um, ranked one. This is the one I barely touched. Seven days, one hour, 22 minutes. Yep. And then my Warlock, which surprisingly I spent the most time on. 21 days, zero hours, 58 minutes. So I just need to get on for two minutes with them, and then it'll be at 21 days and one hour. I just, it's ridiculous. Like, I'm the, I'll be the first God person. Damn, I did not. And the funny thing is, like you said, I don't even do all this stuff. I'm not a person who's into raids. Um, I am. I just, 
It requires six people. Like, oh. We're doing the rage, god damn it. Oh my. We, we don't have six people. I um no, six. hit up SB because she's a part of the dames and she can call them like quick. <laughs> if she if you like if you if you honestly want to do it, hit SB oh, up. Like, I also, and she will rally the dames of the destiny. Other squad that I was playing with. Uh, the other squad that I was playing with, uh, they hit me up. Uh, well, I hit them up when I heard about the trying. I'm like, y'all trying to go back in? <laughs> y'all, tr- y'all trying to y'all trying to go back into the uh, into this game? Like you trying to re- go into the crack? Just, just let the crack take you again. Just a taste. You'll be fine. How do you check your hours again? I don't actually well, I'm go to bungie.net. And then stats, right? Go to your legend and then stats. Yeah, a game that I haven't played in like for the most part a year. I have 12 days, 10 hours, and 44 minutes on my main character. <laughs> and that's with me taking a year off from the game, essentially. Like that should say everything about how unhealthy this game has been for me. Cause God, I really wish my KD was better, but shit. Well, we won't. We won't worry about all that. Nah, I uh, mean, but, um, yeah, Destiny Two. Hey, was I'm, I'm competitive. That's how I look at yeah. it. Destiny Two was announced. Yes, I know you're competitive. What is my? Well, no, I'm saying my KD. I'm not a competitive person. I'm just saying my KD seems to be of a competitive level at least. Uh, especially my Titan. My Titan is skewed up. Like crazy, damn. It's skewing up. Okay. But go ahead, what were you saying? Sorry. I'll just keep looking at this. Um, what were you saying, Black? Sorry, one second. I had a call really quickly. No, I was like, go ahead and complete what you were saying while but, I look at this. Uh Destiny was uh decided to release some new uh information. Uh, and by information, I mean a cinematic trailer that the internet collectively lost their mind over uh, for what is, in my opinion, no reason. But then again, I am a petty, petty asshole. Uh, but uh, yeah, for Destiny, uh, they released a cinematic trailer, which uh, in keeping in theme with the more recent DLCs that have come out for the game, they are, have been emphasizing more and more stories since that seemed to be everybody's complaint from the original Um with everybody's favorite uh, Nathan Fillion reprising his role as Cade uh, and having a lot of fun with it. it. It was a good trailer. It's all cinematic, so I don't care. I want to see gameplay, which we see May 8th. Uh, but yeah, we get Destiny 2. If you want to check out the trailer, check it out. I would also just recommend, if you ever get the chance, look at the more recent cinematics for Destiny, and you'll see a lot of the personality that you see uh, in that trailer. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's kind of funny because I was listening to um, another podcast, Giant Paw Podcast, and they were talking about some of them hadn't played it in ages, and they were like, you know, they didn't even know that Nathan Fillion was in the game because, let's be honest, when Destiny first started, the characters weren't fleshed out. No, you know, you, what do you, you if you you would know who they are. If you recognize voices pretty well, like I knew it was Nathan Fillion, I know that um, Akora Ray is Gina Torres. Yeah. Everybody knows um, Zavala is Captain Daniels from The Wire. You know, it's like it, you can pick up some of the voices, but some of the things you may not have because you barely heard them. They weren't they weren't given much, much. of a role. But that's why I think for a lot of people, it's great for the people that haven't really been keeping up with Destiny. But it did annoy me from the standpoint of as somebody that's kept up with the game, I guess for its first two years, year year two uh, was really where I started to fall off on the game. Um, like this idea, it's, it seems new to a lot of people that if you had watched like the like I don't I don't remember um, the first DLC that much and remember how much actual storytelling, but I think there was a decent amount there. But the way they told their stories and the way they played characters up and gave character their own characters their own opportunity to really talk uh, was really good. Um, was really uh, and, and it just did a better job. It showed that they were actually committing to kind of bringing a lot of the stuff that people 
didn't know about because they didn't dive into the lore uh, to a little bit more of a forefront. Now, with that said, uh, for those that don't know, stuff does not carry over to Destiny 2, uh, but you can earn things for Destiny 2, I believe, by playing the base game right now. Um, but the trailer kind of also explains why stuff does not carry over. As Kate said, they blew up all your stuff and his stuff. But more importantly, more importantly, his stuff. <laughs> I just, uh, it's such a good. But Destiny Two is coming out September eighth. It is on PC as well, which has a lot of people happy, and it's probably going to result in me buying two copies of this game. Um, because I'm going to have squads like y'all. I'm going to probably run with on PlayStation Four, and I'm going to have to get on PC because. Yeah, there are going to be people who are now happy to play it. See, I do find it funny how a lot of people are trying to really shift on the PC. Like, a lot of the streamers are all hyped to get it on PC now, which yeah. I find very interesting. And then people were also very much uh, talking about the fact that, like, there, <laughs> there were legitimate concerns. And I think this was from smaller streamers in the sense of, Bigger streamers like that otherwise weren't touching Destiny now are going to be coming into it. Destiny is going to grow. Oh, it's from... already happening. Um, we saw a tweet the other day where Lyric and uh, what's his name, Soda Popman. Co- What'd you say? I was gonna say, uh, Co Carnage, I believe, is also because yeah, Co Carnage, too. Like... They were saying how they need to hook up with um, Professor Broman and King Athalia, who are. Mm-hmm. The two biggest names in the Destiny community on well, Twitch. There's something that I don't think a lot of people don't know is like people like Co and a bunch of them have already been in contact with them. Yeah. It's just they They've aren't fans sweet. of controllers and consoles. Yeah. So they never played the game. And so I just make the point of Destiny, I think, to will probably be, it'll take Destiny's spot as one of those top stream games on Twitch. Where is Destiny right now on Twitch? It would surprise me if it's not. Oh, it's always lurking like in the top 15, 20. Has it really dropped that far? Mm -hmm. That surprised me that it's dropped that far. But then again, some of the. We have to think. um, There's been a huge gap in content. Like it's probably up now. It's probably up now, but it's like. Yeah, Destiny right now is number. Number, uh, what's that? Four, nine? Number nine? Yes, number nine right now. I mean, it usually has about 10k people, which is really good for Twitch. It puts you in the top. As long as you're in those first, like, two rows. Yeah, you usually see it in the top three rows. It's very rare when things drop actually below that point. But I think that's good. Um, Destiny is still an environment where you can grow because it's a a community, a large community of people caring about a specific game, so. I'm happy for it. I can't wait for this game. Um, if you want a summary on the lore, there are people on YouTube that can do a great job of that. Um, I just tell you now, go to Bife. Yep. Just go to fucking Bife. He is the lore master. He knows everything. Well, goddamn. Um, what's this called? Uh, Grimoire. He's like a fucking yep. Destiny librarian. So yes, BYF Bife. Just go look up. Um. And Dado, Dado's pretty good. Dado's a good person to go to for breakdowns on stuff, gear, weapons. If you have the time, you can always just go on Destiny on Bungie.net and read all of the grimoire or look up there. Plenty of websites that have all the stuff compiled. Uh, which, if black you want, I can give you a link to the. I just go Bife. Bife. Bife is. He has a charming um, British accent. So. Uh, but uh, for me, I am probably going to try to achieve rank 7. Um, I have until August. 120 days. Well, it's funny. He's doing a Destiny read right now. Uh-huh. Who? Bife. The oh. Stories of Destiny, Chapter 1. Hey, see, look, it's always available. Definitely go check him out. And yeah, Destiny 2 is I don't know. It always puts me in a good mood talking about Destiny because it's one of the first, I think, MMO esque games because people hate when you call it an MMO, but MMO esque games that I think I was around for the start of that I was also old enough to get into. Um, 
I was around for the start of WoW, but I was never really old enough to really. I could never be a hardcore raider in WoW. My parents aren't gonna let their middle schooler stay up all night to raid with some like thirty year old dude. Um, but definitely I had that opportunity because I just had more room to maneuver myself. Um, and just older in life, and I love it. It's a great game. Check out Destiny, and if you wanted to buy it, now would be the time to buy Destiny One because you can probably get it for like twenty bucks and get all the content. Well, at least at Christmas time, you were able to do that. But speaking of sequels, uh, another game that I don't know what would you say was res- received as well as Destiny One, or maybe received a little bit worse. Um, I also got this... announced officially. Go ahead. Which was that? This uh, was some of the things announced. God damn it! Because hmm? I just picked up another article that I just realized. The other sequel. Happened. Ah, Not Star the, Wars yeah, Battlefront. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, Star Wars Battlefront is officially announced. Even though EA has always said, "Yeah, we're making it." <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess they had to put an official um picture up just to say that. Uh, so stupid. You're going to go, yeah, we're making it last year while Battlefield 1 was being promoted. So why do you need oh. to officially announce it, idiots? I just, all right. <laughs> have they given an idea of a release date or what you think Star Wars Celebration? Is they say Star Wars Celebration, you're going to find the most information. That's where I'm gonna, they're going to put like the first trailer and all of that. So I'm going to ask this. It's going to be ignored, but I'm going to ask EA, please don't give us. Star Wars Battlefront 3 when Star Wars Episode 9 comes out. Please don't. Don't do that. Why I'm not? just asking. Because I don't need a Star Wars game every time we have a new Star Wars movie come out. I don't need a well, new... You're like, supposed to be getting a lot more Star Wars. It's just that they're I don't mind a Star Wars game. I don't need a Battlefront are. game. <laughs> Maybe I should say. Okay. I would like uh, more, I can understand that. More improvement. Like I felt like Star Wars Battlefront 1 wasn't supported the way that a lot of people expected, maybe? But actually, got pretty good support. People just fell off it fast. I mean, if you've ever played the DLC, which I actually have, okay, they actually... I mean, that game has like 20 fucking game modes right now. <laughs> See, I'm not, the bad, I'm not the happiest. And it's like a lot of different things that you can do in there. They put a lot of characters... I'm not the happiest about that though. Like, it's, I don't know. It, it leaves me conflicted because uh, 20 game modes is like, it splits the player base pretty thin when it, you know, with uh, it And I would say that would be the biggest problem because um, certain things you don't get a lot of people playing, even though they are really, really fun. Um, yeah, I could see that. But I mean, Dave, it, it's a good game. I don't think it's a bad game. Um, I just think that people, I don't know why. It weirds me out how certain online games, people will be like, oh, it's not enough. But others, they'll play like forever, even though they don't have half the content. That a game like Battlefront does. It's weird. Because Battlefront was mechanically sound. Um, you know, it felt that, good. That's a, it's it's a, it's a issue I've, I've wanted to talk about for a while and get into it at a different point. But games don't have second chances. I kind of touched on it briefly, but games just seriously don't have second chances at all. Um, people aren't given the opportunity to ever uh, like go back to a game. People just don't do that very often. You have your month or so. A game has about a month shelf life before people are on to the next thing. Or they do just play that one game. It's very rare that if people play somebody that plays a bunch of different games goes back to multiple uh, those games consistently enough to see the changes in them uh, and see them to a point where like the game can become like a lot better. I just realized, wait, can I, can I ask a question with about Destiny, going back to it? Mm-hmm. Do you have to max out all of the characters? 
What do you mean? Like every like a warlock, a hunter, and a. Do you like, have to? Look to get the level up to get the t-shirt center. Um, I don't think so. Or just the quest. I don't know. Look, it's Destiny is consuming me again, people. Quest. Black knows what happens when Destiny consumes me. I think you just need to finish the quest. It's not good. And do certain things in the book. All right. The book, the book, the book. But yeah, uh, with um, I guess overall, when it comes down to Star Wars Battlefront Two, I'm I was never the biggest fan of the Star Wars Battlefront series after I got older. Um, the games just felt kind of. It, it's looked upon with very heavy rose shaded glasses. That's why I was completely going nuts combating people who were upset with what they did with this battlefront in comparison to the original. It's like people, it's actually kind of the same as the first battlefront. There was no single player mode at all. It's just, for it's me, I just. Online. Being honest for me, it's just like I can't. I actually just the game as a kid was cool because you got to play as Star Wars and go with that. And for me, after that novelty wore off, it was like, oh yeah, no, because fundamentally speaking, it's the same thing. You play as a person who participated in major Star Wars events. You are literally the definition of like an infantry unit. Yeah, you're you're that guy who was like, you know, I was there when I saw. Luke take down that ad at it was something to see because we were getting our ass kicked. You're Dude, that guy. The guy talking to his grandson telling him about yeah. the great Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Or exactly. Whatever. You're that guy who tells stories of how you fought under the command of General um you know Organa and shit and like that. Occasionally like, <laughs> to be that person. Yeah. So I yeah, I I didn't get it, but it's like, okay, sure. Yeah, Battlefield it was just that spectacular. Sure. Uh-huh. And they were like, oh, it had space in it. It's like, it really didn't have space in it. You flew between ships and then you got like, off. There's no man's sky. Oh, wait. No, yeah, no. it's like, you didn't really have much space combat. It was like, you would run into a couple of ships on your way to a big cruiser so you can, for some reason, back on as a pilot, get all out of your plane to run around a fucking Star Destroyer shooting people to shoot their shields instead of but, killing the shield generator, which is on the outside of the ship. Which I honestly would have been fine. And I would have um, honestly been fine if they had done that like thematic. Like You can pick a class specifically meant to infiltrate the ship. But it was the idea of just not nah, like you're just a no. Guy. You're just a pilot, and you just get off, and okay. I'm gonna um, go inside and shoot these like energy things, even though I see that big fucking antenna that I know is a shield generator on the outside of the ship. All I gotta do is just chip enough damage on the shield to get a bullet through and blow it up, or I can just do like that dude in Return of the Jedi, just suicide. And it'll be all over in one hit, and we can kill this shit because I'm just also saying yeah, like, this makes also, sense, but this right, is great. An idea? A semi customizable Star Wars like Jedi Knight game with like the four honor absolver engine. Or you can actually like pick between different light like styles. You can use your lightsaber and if you want to mix in. I need them to do another goddamn. Um, Masters of Terror Sky. <laughs> God damn it. Let's get another Star Wars fighting game going. And yes, do it like for honor. All right. But we're going to, I can tell we're already going to go down that, like jump down this rabbit hole. And I need 1313 to come out, but that's a bit, I'm done. Are, are, do you think it's a day? Well, I mean, you're a Star Wars junkie. So I'm going to say it is a day, day one purchase. Do you think. Well, yeah, somebody that played the original, if you had to give them a list of five things that you felt like needed to be addressed, what would it be? From, you mean this? Yeah, from the the reboot. Battlefront 1 to Battlefront 2. Um, Things that they need to address. Uh, I don't really care about the story thing. It would be nice to see a story. That's fine, but it's not that big of a deal. Um. 
because again, it wasn't a real story in the original anyway. In fact, it was like Titanfall. If you ever played the original Titanfall, that's how Battlefront shit was, people. So there. Stop playing. Stop pretending. Um, uh, what do I want to see? Uh, I actually need more classes. More um, classes. That's interesting. Yeah, because I, I feel like what they did was like all they did was give you a bunch of skins and a bunch of guns. So I just can change your outfit and I could change your gun, but you didn't really there was no real identity to any of the soldiers. It wasn't like you were a heavy trooper. You would just happen to be a guy who decided I'm gonna carry this gun as opposed to carrying that gun. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you you it's just your outfit and your um, that that was it. So, I would like to be- see a better class system because it would make you have to play in a unique way with each you know person. You know what I mean? Um, what else should they do? Uh, I thought that they could have found a better way of integrating ground. Um units as far as like it was unbalanced as far as the units go the um weapon the ships and stuff like that like pretty much if you were a rebel all you had were the x wings the a wings um and that was pretty in the speeders that was it you can only get flying vehicles Whereas you can get an ATATs and ATSTs, you know, you had a little bit more variety. They could, you know, there's a, actually, again, going back to classes, there's actually a ton of stuff you can, you could have battlefielded it up a lot more than you did. Cause there are a lot of um, things in the Star Wars universe that you could have utilized on the battlefield that would have added some diversity. To it too. Um, other than that, not really. Well, that's good. Because I mean, like I said, it was a solid shooter. It, it mechanically felt. I mean, it's dice, so of course it's going to feel good mechanically. The weapons felt nice for fake weapons. But do you want Bad Company Three? <laughs> do I want Bad Company Three? Yeah. Sure. Why the fuck not? Well, I'm like you have an answer. There's a correct answer and a wrong answer. To this, sir. Don't get it wrong. I'm joking. Uh, show the fuck. Why not? Let's go. But, uh, but no, that's that's good because I just wanted to hear from the perspective of somebody that enjoyed uh, and definitely like is gl- ha- super happy to see a second one. I I need something added to the gameplay loop personally because while I think there was nothing wrong mechanically, there was nothing mechanically personally to draw me in. Well, and I think in some ways that's where a campaign would kind of help because it would actually give a sense of more purpose. Like for what it's worth, even though they were fun to play, the modes were your standard, um, you know, first person shooter, multiplayer modes, you know, you know, yeah, you had that. And then they had a couple of variations and things like that. that were cool that came with the DLC. But yeah, for the most part, it was standard multiplayer. There was, um, it was just basically fight one person versus to fight somebody else. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, so it would be interesting to see them come up with some new ideas as far as what the combat is. I mean, sure, they can go with the whole can online campaign thing too, but again, it's, Stuff we've seen before, uh, true. So, yeah, it, that, that's the hard thing when it comes to multiplayer gaming. I think these days it's 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 hard to make something truly, totally unique. It's easier to make something that's enjoyable more than it is to like put an identity stamp on it. Yeah, because you're asking people. 
who have been playing the same. That's another thing. There are some people who've been playing the same thing for years and who, while they complain about how they don't, they get bored of that stuff, continue to play the same goddamn damn thing over and over again, no matter what, to actually take a chance on something that's totally different and unique. And that's not always well received, you know? That's so true. Speaking of things that don't always change a lot, but when they do, uh, it's usually fun and met with at least some degree of fanfare. Um, We have a few more characters falling into one of the many new fighting games coming out this year, that being Injustice 2. Uh, We got the chance to look at four characters in there. It's good to be bad. They're going to trailer. Um, I think I would argue two of these characters are at this point super well known and two of them aren't. Um, People may disagree with me, especially if you're into Flash, maybe disagree with me. Uh, But the people that we we got announced uh, were or were shown off gameplay for were Gorilla Grodd, Gorilla, yeah, Gorilla Grodd, uh, Bane. Scarecrow and Captain Cold. It's Captain Cold and Gorilla Grodd, I think, being the less known of the four comparatively to Scarecrow and Batman. I mean, Scarecrow and Bane. Uh, and they all look they look solid. They look really inter- I think the visual style of this new Injustice game is really good for me. Like, I love it. I kind of want to get this game just for the story mode, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the Mortal Kombat fighting system. I just want the story mode just to see where they're gonna go. It's and funny, I like Mortal Kombat. Well, I'm not. Good I like Mortal Kombat twos because Mortal Kombat twos. Oh, I more, like I like and more akin to Injustice, and I love Injustice. Yeah, I'm not but. the. I don't know Injustice. I was not feeling the first one beyond the sto- from the story standpoint, um, but at the same time, I'm gonna probably <sighs> check this one out. I always say whenever I find myself saying I'm not gonna check a game out, inevitably, I. Look. By the um, way, shout out to Robert England for deciding to be the scarecrow. Yeah, definitely. And he, uh, the scarecrow they have for this game, if you want to jump in, that, is really it well works. Designed. Because if you, you're probably sitting here listening to this. If you haven't if seen the trailer, you're probably like, the fuck is the scarecrow doing in a goddamn fighting game? If you see him, but they did it right because they utilize the psychology. Yeah. Along with like, yeah, it, it works. It works. It really works. Um, it does. Now, somebody surprising that looked surprisingly good is Captain Cold. He looks yeah. really good from a gameplay perspective, like really flashy in terms of movement. Uh, Captain Cold is a Flash villain for those that do not know. Um, he's really cool, and that's not meant to be a pun. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> What's happened? I said uh, he's really cool, and then I re- realized that oh. was not <laughs> a typical pun. It's fine. It's fine. It was not. Uh, it wasn't intentional. Uh, but he looks really good. I would recommend watching the trailer, just because they clearly have some brawler characters and maybe a few different types. So far, that's twenty-eight characters. That's without the Joker being shown in this game, because we also uh, twenty-nine because we got um. A new character today, or as of the recording. Well, it's good you kind of saw, but yeah, yeah now they officially oh, put her in Catwoman. Um, Which is ridiculous. That's a little kitty to help her. But it's funny because I'm looking at the It's Good to Be Bad trailer, and it's like people that you know that are in there that they haven't really talked about, like Aquaman. Yeah. You know, being one of the characters, things like that. It's. It looks like it's gonna be good. And yeah, of course, Harley. You got Harley Quinn. Um, but I think we'll see a lot. We'll see because what Firestorm's in there, Harley Quinn's in there, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, Cheetah, Swamp Thing, goodness, Robin, Batman. Like, there's so many characters in this game. Yeah, Brainiac is what a lot of people were thinking. We have not seen any Damian Wayne, Robin of all things. Like, oh, Doctor Fate. Robin's gonna murder people. It's but yeah, we, awesome. Oh, Black Canary looks like she's gonna be a fucking handful too. I don't want to even discuss it. Huh? I don't want to even discuss that character. That character should be fun to fight against. I just want to get you know you're gonna be more. like fucking breaking your controller. I need to add them to add more people to the beta though. That's my biggest issue. 
is that I want to play this beta ahead of buying the game. Uh, just as kind of like a final summary, and I have not gotten an invite to the beta. I'm just glad that they're making pulls from not just those people who you really know now. Like, they're oh. going out and getting the Dr. Fates. I need them to get Hawk and Dove. And I need them to get Huntress. Nah, we, we, they ain't going that deep. No, we, fucking Hawk and Dove would be perfect for a fighting game. They're not going that deep. Blood. They need to. They don't know. They, look. Leave it to the Superman's plot. No. Superman. Give me Huntress. At least give me Huntress. You're asking too much. How about Kilowog? You know you want Kilowog. You don't want Hal Jordan. You want Kilowog. George. Ah. I want Kondrain. But um, with all that said, I would recommend checking out uh, the game. Checking out all the trailers. There's you probably will be a character that you like in some way, shape, or form with all of the characters that have come out for Injustice 2. Uh... It's the Dead Trail also just did a really good job of showing off the game, and that's not even that far away. We are currently in April, and that game drops oh, in March or May. May, May. oh, money. Yep, fucking god damn it. This is why I do kind of wish they would start selling single player separate because I would surely be buying the single players to that game <laughs> and just waiting on the multiplayer for a little bit. <clears throat> and by selling single player. I do not mean what Street Fighter Five did. That does not <laughs> count. But we've talked about a lot of classics. We've talked about a lot of games that are really recent um, in terms of their popularity between uh, with Battlefront being the oldest, but you can toss in there uh, the new Star Wars Battlefront, um, Injustice 2, as well as Destiny 2. Uh, but funnily enough, it the most buzz online this week I saw personally Came from a classic, actually, being remade, remastered, and I, uh, funnily enough, which I found out today thanks to Black, being released the, as the original for free. The original StarCraft for all of you people out there that are in esports, that are into RTSs, is being offered for free currently and being remade. <clears throat> which is so good. <laughs> so good if you've never seen the original starcraft it is it's the game that really pushed ec uh esports to a new level I, I'm, I'm gonna say this and people may disagree but you shouldn't because it's probably real there is no league or dota 2 without this uh, they don't get on that level as far as being on the level that they are. Oh, you mean from an esports perspective? Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say because oh no, not Warcraft like being created. Yeah. I'm saying like from the esport level because even though it wasn't a huge esports phenomenon here, StarCraft was huge in particular in Asia, in particular, really in particular in South Korea. South East Korea, Korea. It, 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 that is one of the number t one careers in I that make country. A point, where our esports scene is now, that this is where South Korea was, what, 20 years ago? Yeah. Like in the 90s, where it's still kind of just starting to find funding. Uh, for those, to give you an idea of what you might see in South Korea if it was here in America, there would be teams that were like followed by Verizon. And Comcast with the SK Telecoms um, and, uh, oh, my goodness. I cannot remember the other uh, telecom. Uh, com. Well, it's free there. They, oh, yeah. Every home yeah. is installed with. But I make the point that it's ridiculous. Like those, like brands and things like that really support it. Samsung has its own team. Here in the United States, we have like much a very different view of it and how sports are handled are very different but even still um it's just on a completely different scale and it's really cool to see the original come back because a lot of people don't really know about don't really know about starcraft like that even myself i don't know about it as as well as i would do know something starcraft too just because it's a very different time for me 
But yeah. the game, if you've ever seen it, is so dramatically different that and so good that uh, I can't even go get Starcraft one. Yeah, please. Now don't expect to understand it because God was that game difficult. <laughs> oh, uh, and the DLC too. That's the funny part. And Brood War. And the Brood War. Yeah, <laughs> Brood War. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that game is amazing. Um, check it out. It's free. What do you have to lose? And get some good uh, gaming education. Ugh. All right. Oh, I have a pop up. Um, Please. Article. What's that? Um, I'm gonna send you the link now because. I forgot about this because I thought it was hilarious when much I saw like it. I'm, much like I'm uh, on a in a vehicle of some description, I will try to find a way to segue into uh, a separate entertainment medium altogether in that We Happy Few, the games that uh, at E3 of last year was... Uh, I, I read this a little bit earlier, so I actually know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> the um, game that got a lot of buzz because of its cinematic trailer. Uh, at E3, um, it is getting a movie actually, a movie adaptation, which is really weird for an early access game to be getting a movie adaptation. Yes, a game that's not even released yet. They released the story component of it now. Oh, really? But even still, that's really weird to me. Yeah. Now, with that said, I'm interested in the game because, from a storytelling <laughs> standpoint, the game looked really interesting. Uh, but. What? Yeah, I don't know what to think of this because this may hit before major movies that have been. Yeah, it may hit before the game and major movie um, licenses that have been made, like Halo and Uncharted. Well, I think it has Halo. a very good. It has a very good like jumping point as a dystopian feature kind of a weird. Yeah, story. It, it's, it's a very convertible game. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's Gold Circle Entertainment, the studio that helped produce Pitch Perfect, uh, who got the rights to the movie and is currently in the early development stages uh, of it. The developer, Compulsion Games, has partnered with uh, another studio as well to help make the movie. Um, and they are also the people that are producing the Sleeping Dogs animation uh, or animation adaptation. English is hard, uh, but I, I think it'll be good. I think it's one of those those properties that can work. Uh, and if we were going to tangentially talk about things, uh, you this would also be where we mentioned the abysmal release and reception of Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> uh, I've not seen the movie yet. I plan on seeing it. But uh, unlike unlike uh, what I think that even this game will receive, I think Ghost in the Shell has had a incredibly bad reception overall. An incredibly bad reception and people have just not been feeling it and I think since that movie came out it was kind of set up to fail yeah I guess uh, but yeah. I need to hear like a serious opinion Um, one person I did hear a serious opinion they were just like they just thought it was boring they had no issue with like the character people playing role mm -hmm. uh, they just thought that it was a very boring movie mm -hmm. so uh, you mean what my thoughts are on it? The entire situation, I guess, in general? No, um, I was... I have not seen the movie yet. Uh, going based off of what I know of the premise is I'm a sci-fi dude, and I remember watching this old, when I got older, and I think it it kind of bore a little bit, but it's it's still good. Like It's one of those things that when people talk about anime, um, I do recommend people watching ghost in the shell and for those that don't know ghost in the shell is the thing that inspired the matrix um and i recommend just checking out ghost in the shell it is good now in terms of the whole scarlett johansson thing i think you you can have a title actress with a big name that can help i don't really care as long as the movie is good yeah i think I, that's the big thing um, is i don't like, think the movies are good from what uh, people and I, I make the point to people whenever you have that issue, 
it's really hard to argue that an actor with little to no known experience is going to knock out a role super well. Uh, so I, again, I just care if the movie's good or bad. And you, like you said, from what I'm hearing, and the trailers even, they are not necessarily. Uh, they, they, it doesn't seem like they even have the right tone to the movie. So that's a little bit worrying. Mm. Oh well. What beat it this week? Um, Baby Boss. <laughs> Baby Boss topped the, the. That's a damn shame. Can we not? God, I don't even. I don't want to even talk about that. That makes me sad. Because isn't Logan still in theaters? Uh-huh. And Baby Boss is what. But yeah, we can keep going. Yeah, so get to the main topic and so we can actually try to finish this podcast in about two hours. That would be that would be interesting. Let's see if we can do that. Actually, how long have we been recording? Do you have any idea? Uh, I guess not. Well, and I just saw it be right back. So I'm going to go ahead and segue into our topic. Um, so main topic of tonight's show is the age-old argument of Twitch versus YouTube. Um, it's been had many times before. Um, but now it's come back into the forefront, um, courtesy of Polygon, as they did an article where they discussed three reasons why they felt that um, Twitch, well, streaming, not Twitch in particular, but streaming, is replacing the Let's Play, play industry, which that was something that was wildly popular on YouTube back in the day. People used to love going and watching people play games that they were interested in, interested in their favorite games, things like that. Um, a lot of YouTube commentators built up huge followings with their Let's Plays. But as time has gone on, Twitch has picked up a lot of steam over the years. And with the recent changes in YouTube's policies over the past few years as they've switched um, consistently, Twitch has found more stable footing and seems to be rapidly catching up and in some people's minds, surpassing YouTube. Um, so let's just get right to it. Which do you prefer, Twitch or YouTube? Uh, <laughs> it's an easy answer, right? Uh, for me, I, I guess the 200-plus straight days of streaming speak for themselves uh, in that it would be Twitch without a shadow of a doubt. Even as a YouTuber, I probably... I've spent more time on Twitch in the last, I would argue if I'll go back since Twitch's inception, uh, maybe there was one year where there's an exception where I spent more time on YouTube. Um, but even to this day, I spend more time on Twitch than I do on any other platform, whether it be Twitter or whatever. I'm on Twitch. Now, would you say that's just as a streamer or that also a, includes as a user as well as a user um speaking personally if i use twitch say uh four hours normally maybe eight hours on a good day um then maybe on youtube i might spend an hour to two hours watching videos and any of that other time that's generally when i'm eating uh just because i would rather be able to uh, put on and this is generally how i always think of things is twitch is kind of like interactive television to a degree. Uh, and YouTube is more like movies uh, where I want to kind of grab my food, sit back, relax, and just watch something straight through. Uh, but on Twitch, I'm generally trying to interact on the chat a lot more. I'm trying to be a part of whatever is going on. And so I can spend the rest of my day on Twitch for the vast majority of it. It's just I always have a stream playing. There's always somebody on at any time of the day streaming that I want to watch and view their content. 
And so for me, like, it's easy to say, even as a viewer, I consume more Twitch. Um, I could even give you numbers if uh, you give me a small bit. How are you able to you actually log your Twitch uh, time? I recently started monitoring my network traffic. And so I can tell you, like, the last day's stats to give you an idea of uh, where my traffic has been going to, just to give you an idea. Um, that. Let me see. Well, we can, we can keep talking about it. I can kind of do this as we talk. Um. Overall, I think that uh, I think it's just a platform. I think it's a very logical next step. Um, in that there are very few things that if you're not doing something highly edited, that you can't really do on Twitch. And I think let's playing lends itself well to streaming as well. Um, even well, though, I, go ahead. It's funny because I was talking about this last night. Um, with YouTube Let's Plays, I feel like it's a more manicured production um, because that's a, that's the beauty of watching streaming. And um, you know, we were agreeing with this last night. It's one thing to do a YouTube video where you can sit and you can edit and you can cut and you can re-record certain aspects of things like that to make it perfect and just to come up with the best production um to give the best presentation of yourself twitch even if you're trying to put on a character put on airs what have you you're live and you're out there yeah. you're exposing yourself in a way that um not a lot of people may be comfortable with and not a lot of people are good at and more importantly, it actually shows the real you. Even with the airs and things like that, people can see the glimpses of the real you. And if you're a, not only an entertaining person, but you're a genuine person, you the connection that's made on Twitch, I feel like is a much more deeper and also here. healthier connection. Well, in in a lot of ways because again i as long as you're being real you're you find that person that you kind of vibe with if that makes sense uh, but i think that for the content creator that's also there's a downside to that and yeah um, there is in that more recently there's been a lot of talk about like streamer health on twitch uh and to keep it kind of brief um, the majority of streamers, um, whether it's kind of growing or uh, really large streamers, a lot of them do run a six to seven day a week schedule. Um, and that can be eight hours a day for six to seven days a week. They don't really take days off um, because it's a really easy job to get into the mindset of where if you're doing YouTube videos, even if you're necessarily uploading all every single day, you aren't necessarily having to be on all of that time um, or having to be on because you can be editing and kind of relaxing yeah, you can be editing and doing whatever. Whereas on Twitch, like you said, there's that interactive moment um, that that's constantly there. I myself can attest to something goes wrong and sometimes it's really difficult to like be like, all right, yep, not, everything's good. Nothing changed. Something's happened. Uh, and that's just how it is. I think the platform, it can lead to better and stronger connections because it is, I don't want to say more authentic, but you get to see a lot more of the person, like you said. But that also isn't always best for the person because it's really easy to get caught up in working. And there's still stuff behind the scenes off stream that people have to do that I don't think are always addressed. And I think it's a really big health concern. Now, I like the platform. Um, from a managerial point of view, uh, I think the biggest reason why YouTube and Twitch differ now is that the people that started Twitch are still fairly in control of the company. They may have been bought out, 
Uh, they may be owned overall by a different company, but the management for the most part have been kept pretty much the same. Well, we uh, see, like the um, things that you brought up with the health and the problems and issues like that. My counter to that is that if you have have something going on in your personal life and you can't stream or something happens, an incident, I feel like people's reaction is, damn, that's fucked up. You know, I hope he's okay. Like they, I think they, knowing getting an immediate, like you know, that immediate feedback that Twitch can give again in a more naked manner, like you're right out there live in front of people. People appreciate that and they respect that more and they're willing to um, be a little more patient uh, with you. I mean, I'd tell, I haven't streamed in a while and I've had people hit me up like, yo, when you coming back to streaming, how are you doing? Like things like that. You know what I mean? I think that and I don't have a big follow. I have like a tiny as well. But I said uh, that's like the good core of streaming. Yeah. Um, but it's like with like, YouTube, good. if you don't upload for a certain amount of period, you're totally forgotten. But I think that's and, also kind of how the site the site is set up. Like it's kind of like I always make this somebody when I was talking to them about Twitch and they were trying to impart upon me like how important it is. Uh, they uh, part of the reason I call it like TV, like Black. What's your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? Jeez, that's a good damn question. I don't really. Or as a kid, what was your favorite TV show? As a kid, favorite TV show? Oh my god, as much stuff as I watched well, as a kid. Well, to give me a raw thought of it, if I had to throw something out there, Robotech. What time did it come on? Came on to like eight o'clock in the morning, right? But before notice I was... that. Notice that. You can, <laughs> you can, that's the idea of like your favorite streamers and the people that you connect with on that level. Yeah, they're going to be there over and over again because you've built up that type of a connection to them. Where, like I say, YouTube is kind of like the movie. There are people that upload every day that have that similar connection. Shoot, I watch channels on YouTube that upload upwards of five times in a singular day. Um, But with all of that said, I think the side I'm talking towards is less directly towards the viewers and more from the streamer themselves point of view of like a lot of streamers want to be live whenever possible. And it's really easy to burn that candle at both ends because you want to the people that just as much as you build the connection that the chat builds with you or people build with you from chat, you build with them. It's good to see them, to talk to them, to interact with them. Uh, and then on top of that, like, if this is your job, it's really easy to be like, well, you could sit there and eat, and that's social eating, and then you could stream a game, and then maybe you just want to talk to chat, so you switch to IRL, and then you switch back to a game, and all of a sudden you've been going 16 hours and haven't done much beyond go to get up and go to the bathroom, and that's where I think like that worry actually comes in is Twitch is a platform that even more so than YouTube, I think is really easy to o for somebody to overwork themselves. Well, Unintentionally. Yeah, and that's true. But I think now we're going to get to a point where more people are going to put on. Uh, you know, they're going to have to put out more things. Like, I wish people would be more informative yeah. and do more stuff. And see, that's where... I think that's the one place where Twitch is lacking, even though they're trying to build it up, the videos and the features like that for people to um, digest. They There needs to be something or someone out there who consistently puts out things to so give people tips on how to stream. Because I know, like, as much as I don't stream these days, I try to do that. Like, if people ask me questions, I want to, like, let people know. You need to take care of your body. Um, yeah, I you think can't be abusive to your body. You have to take breaks. That's mandatory. Um, drink, yeah. eat. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where, as somebody that, were we to go back to 2012 and 2013, uh, you can ask anybody that was in my college dorm room. I could game for 16 hours and get up from my Twitter chair maybe actually twice, if that, because I could just be so into the game that I don't notice. And I ignore 
all the signs my body is giving me. Since streaming, that's not necessarily the case. There are people as well that are out there. I think a lot of the bigger streamers especially are the people that will tell you, like, you got to have days off where you can relax and just recharge. You got to have, uh, you got to take care of your body. You have to be doing this. You have to be doing that. But I think the people that are most worrying are, it's never, I think, the people that, for lack of a better term, have made it. That I think becomes the issue. It's the people that are trying to. Um, the people that are, it's it's the dude that wants to make it so badly that he's going to work 80 hours a week, stream another 40 to 50, and then try to work in the other 30 hours between eating, sleeping, and whatever else is going on in his life. And that's all because he's trying to make what to him is a dream job become a reality. And it's really easy to get caught up with that. I think that it's that's that's the one thing. It's one thing about Twitch that I've always said has always been worrying is I can as somebody that has a very obsessive personality. I'm the first I will be the first person to ever say that about myself. I have a fairly obsessive personality about a lot of the things that I'm into. Um, it is really easy for me to have to recognize a lot of times to be like, well, you're going a little bit overboard. You can take a break. You don't have to keep keep constantly going. Because Twitch, like, like you said before, a comment you can respond to at any time. But chat, you're responding to live. You got to be able to, there, there's that interaction. Um, and it's, it's with all the different platforms, I think. I think that everyone... I love Twitch, but it worries me sometimes with just how easy it is. And Twitch is trying their best to help everybody out. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the inter the way the internet is situated right now. Now, going to what you were talking about, about there are a lot of people that don't give out information um, the way they should. I think that has a lot to do with like the the age of the platform. Um, like when we think about even just even just like the idea of how to run a news reporting station that operates on a daily basis. Um, some guy is trying to do a similar thing, nowhere near the same scale necessarily in his, in his room uh, on a daily basis. And that creates that that's an, an insane idea, whether it's just like, there are a bunch of podcasts. Um, I think Prof professor Broman still, does he just still do his podcast? So I'm not as caught up. Um, they stopped at the retooling. Actually, it's kind of crazy. Um, they're building a bar. Yeah. And that should be done soon. Okay. And it's being la relaunched as the speakeasy, which is going to be where they're going to do a podcast from. Hey. Where they sit with other Twitch commentators and have conversations interviews and drinks that is what's up yeah a, another podcast uh streaming focused if you were interested in it is dropped frames uh i believe that is god it is i want to say wednesdays at 6 p.m est Um, and that is over on it is between uh, the main three co-hosts are it me JP Cole Connage, and Ezekiel the third um, and throughout various points uh, when it comes to their through through the show they've given out tips um, and have talked pretty heavily about uh, what is or what what's good what isn't good um, and kind of given ideas for streams Um and streaming and they've they have various schedules and various things that they do um and that's another avenue and i think that is the best resource i can tell to anybody is just look for the bigger guys because i think a lot of the bigger guys are like what mike is saying and myself included i help anybody i can with the information i have but a lot of it is still kind of learning on the job if that makes sense where until you're confronting with an with uh with an idea or something happens you don't always expect it if that may, you don't always necessarily think that it's going to or how or know how it's going to happen and how it's going to unfold. Yeah, uh, well, 
it's funny too because you mentioned the podcast thing. I mean, again, another thing that Twitch does now that is starting to catch fire is they've branched out. Um, it's funny, a lot of people got mad because they felt like, oh, we're they're just going back to their old Justin TV roots. For those who don't know, Twitch started out as a network called Justin TV, which basically just let people get on and stream and do whatever. Um, then they branched off and created Twitch as a game centric um, brand. And eventually Twitch outgrew Justin. Justin folded, Twitch was the thing. And now Twitch is starting to allow for different things more in real life. They, they actually have a channel now called In Real Life, where yep. you can just sit and just have conversations. And um, their idea is literally uh, what that is. The focus should be interacting with chat, but beyond that, they don't care what you do. Obviously, beyond other terms of service. But Yeah, I mean, you don't think that you're going to fucking live stream strip club, please. Just because uh, you're interacting with chat. Yeah, her ass is fat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nah, it don't work <laughs> like that. But, That's you know, not. they have that. They have creative where people can um, showcase their art. Yeah. Um, they have... Music. Um, music where you can showcase your musical talents um talk shows which is um kind of like irl but made to be less interactive with chat it's yeah, more like it's more putting on a podcast. You doing podcast yeah yep um they have social eating which people do food reviews they or they just go out to places and eat it's like literally chat. you can have a dinner party on twitch <laughs> yeah and there's a place for it yeah or you can just uh, talk about games and um They've kind of talked about kind of what they, they've done is they focused on gaming and now they're slowly adding things, but it's always gaming at its core, which I think is one thing that people a lot of times miss. Um, all of these things that pop up are never as big as the gaming. None of them have overtaken the gaming, no matter what they are. Um, they're just kind of things that they're... They, there's always the main house and then there's the add-ons that are just nice because they give... They, they give you different features. Um, it's nice to sometimes just chill out and watch somebody make some crazy art or music or uh, somebody might just be having a dinner party and just sit down and just have a conversation and eat with people. Um, it's I love Twitch as a platform because I think that they are kind of forward thinking in that manner of trying to give people um, that type of an opportunity of like we want to make build a platform that's for you uh, and for the type of content that you make uh whatever content that may be like honestly i feel like they look at patreon and they want to be people's like own live stream patreon because patreon is kind of like that where it's all about create you know you promoting yourself as a creator and your content yeah and trying to, you know, get support for that. And I like the fact that Twitch isn't just limiting themselves anymore to just gaming, you know, just people playing games because now there are people out here who, you know, they may play guitar and now they have a place where they can feel comfortable playing without having to be in front of people, which may yeah. make them nervous. This may build up their confidence to actually want to go out and venture out and Which, do sets in front of like live audiences and things like you know what I mean. And to give people an idea, that's what originally I think I started doing YouTube and Twitch content for. I was a very reserved and quiet person that kept to myself. Um, but it was a platform that I could feel a little bit. It felt a little bit safer to open up a little bit more and to talk and to um, put yourself out there a little bit more. And even if it's just because maybe taking away the face to face component does help you to some degree, just to start to warm up. Uh, and I think that's part of what I, I, I like Twitch versus the Twitch versus YouTube platform. I think YouTube will always have its like video on demand platform is very great. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a great platform for creating content that you want to be seen, um, and placing it there to be seen kind of forever. Um, whereas Twitch is more of a live and community driven platform. Um, something that I would speak to 
as a content creator, there's a there's a under the the surface, there's a competitive air to YouTube, and myself included. I'm a there's a competitive air of a lot of people want to get to a certain place, uh, and really do want to get there, whether that's like to get to certain sponsorships, um, to get to reach certain goals, whatever. Everybody can get that way. Um, whereas Twitch is more about building your community or interacting with somebody else's community, and to me has always been about building relationships and a lot of communities even now are kind of like we grow together um i think we talked about it earlier but the destiny community was very much a community of that when the game came out as much hate as that game got it was still if you're a streamer of destiny we accept any and everybody and we just want to come together for a game that we all love i think destiny can be said to be the community that help like revitalize the idea of Twitch being a community based service yeah. because there had been people who gotten so big on Twitch that they were trying to like, you know, they would work with certain other big people, but for the most part, they weren't like looking at other smaller streamers. Um, raids weren't really a thing. In fact, I've known of a few larger streamers who hated raids. Um, cool. A few years back but like with destiny that was the thing it was like okay i'm the bigger person i got the big numbers now i'm gonna go find somebody smaller and i'm gonna go host them you guys go show him love support and it became like that was that was the norm that was the standard mode of operation with them but i've actually seen some destiny people raid people outside of destiny and those are people getting mad at that and it was like, we, what is it? Stop doing that and start banning well, people. I think that's, there's so a they didn't of understand things. it. Yeah, that's a it's a Twitch culture thing that I think because Destiny also came around. The host button started like showing up or started coming around. Right. I think those years and Twitch became a site where I think Destiny was the first one to kind of collectively really make that decision. Of they were the first community at least I saw that were really pushing hard to. It's it's not even just. Um, I think Professor Goth, uh, Professor Goth, wow, um, <laughs> King Gathalian. It's fine. Let me try it again. Whoo, different uh, titles. Uh, King Gathalian talked about it when the first time I ever saw him, which was I wasn't as equated with the with the Destiny community, but he came on that show I mentioned before, Drop uh, Frames, and talked about how that was kind of the air of competition on Twitch, and he wanted to, and other people within the Destiny community wanted to make it more of a well, no, we're going to build each other up. We're going to grow together to be and get to where we all want to be. And I think that's kind of spread because even if you play one game on Twitch, you generally play other games there. They're, and you generally have other interests as well. And that spreads and you meet a lot of interesting people. Um, and since things like the host button exist, it is kind of nice. There's always going to be people that think that way. There's always somebody that wants to be the very best and are gonna do it and if something can hurt them um aren't gonna aren't gonna necessarily do it i could list people like i could list a hundred of strategies that i know of on twitch that people do that are very much more centered on personal growth than are centered on um other people's growth or to actually help other people in general but i think the focus point of it all is that it's it's a matter of like YouTube is a I think is just YouTube is still so much or YouTube is so much older than Twitch is. Twitch is where YouTube was five years ago. Five, six, seven years ago, where it's just kind of becoming the platform we know of YouTube today. Like new features and new things are starting to roll out that change how the uh, platform fundamentally function. And Twitch has been rolling out a new what a new feature every three months or so in the last like year or so year and a half where we just got cheer emotes um we just got um sub batters back at the twitch con prime which was great for people that have uh, a partner button like all of these things that twitch is constantly doing and i think they're trying to now kind of more so engage in that where a raid is something i and i understand why there's some people that don't like raids raids can be really weird because you lose control of your chat depending on how big the person is um within that that period of time like if you have 
five thousand people just jump in your chat and you have like five mods and you've never seen this many people and everybody's just spamming and you can't read chat anymore. There are people that legitimately don't like that, but it's becoming more and more common. Please to understand, oh, it's a raid. Okay, this is how you handle this and this is how you deal with it. But there's always gonna be people that may not know this. Anymore. It's funny, two things. First of all, I love that you're loquacious because you help me out in times of need. Um, <laughs> <laughs> second thing is, one of the things that I find cool, and I need to find out a way to do this. And yeah, people do take ideas from each other online. Well, that, and Some of the ideas are very cool. If this idea I want to take is so fucking cool. Can I, I'm going to make a point to you my about addiction, that. Mm -hmm. When he gets raided, he actually has a video clip where it's like um a clip made from like gary's mod where mm -hmm. you like see this like big looming giant come out in you know overshadow a crowd of people mm -hmm. you just see like the people look up like in you know amazement and like dudes eating a sandwich and he mm -hmm. like spits it out the lady's holding her baby and drops her baby and all of that you know because she's in such awe and then the like giant just comes over the top and just goes raid. <laughs> it's like I need something like that. That's it's, fucking awesome. And on that topic, that's another difference between the two platforms. YouTube, like you saying what you just said, and then doing it would be, I think, very much seen as like, man, Black is just copying and just taking his style and this and that it's a mentality that i've seen where on youtube it's very much like it's about being unique but it's also about like you can't like ever really acknowledge where your inspiration or where you're pulling from all no that. it's like come on let's be honest on youtube everybody got reaction videos yeah everybody it's just, you might reaction. not reaction it's one of those yeah. things i make the joke to people is like people just don't like the word reaction because it has this certain like perception to what it is there are good reaction videos, just like there are bad reaction videos, just like there are good reviews, bad reviews, good um, commentary, bad commentary. All those things exist. Um, and I say that because on Twitch, it's more of the idea of I've heard a running joke from plenty of Twitch streamers like, yeah, we just steal everything from each other. That's just how the platform works. And it's just a running joke. Of like, yeah, I like that. But how does that work for my channel? But um, then it's like people do things and they take their own you know, unique twist. Yeah. Things like that. It's just like, okay, having the commands that had give away the um, sound cues. You know, yeah. a lot of people have done that before. A lot of people do it, like take it on. But it's like, what's your particular cue? What's your and soundboard? How, you know, what makes it unique to you? That's people do that. Inspiration or ideas, I think, aren't seen as like you're trying to steal somebody else's thing on Twitch so much as it is like, now that that's different as opposed to like if you hold up just like take somebody's emote or do the exact same thing that's one thing but it's like if it's like no that's a cool idea how could i do something like it yeah okay it's like um i don't know do you know who luminosity is i've heard the name before he's a destiny um streamer and he was a, you know as he was coming up he was of course a fan of data um and Dado has this uh emote um for his subs called um dado a where it's him like doing you know how people do the like two fingers pointing like a yeah. like the gun yeah. pose type thing he has yeah. a emote like that so lumi when he got his sub he did lumi a the difference is he just reversed himself in the opposite direction than what dado did Dado loved it. So when they met at um, the last Destiny Con, they actually took a picture of with each other doing that shit because it's like they like they're not they're, there's no animosity. But you know, like, yeah, that's cool. That's flattering. That's what people it, like. I don't know. Like I think it's something that is it's it's something that I personally appreciate. That um, because I'd be the first person to tell people like, I watch streams and part of the thing that I do, not because I'm trying to be rude enough to like just jack people's stuff is, I'll sit in a stream and I'll be like, if I like something, I'm like, all right, that's a cool idea, and I'll just be like, that's interesting, or 
like why do i like the certain thing about the stream why do i like the vibe and i might try to integrate it into my stream like things such as sound commits i like when people can just like randomly type something in chat and you just hear the sound clip plays or uh any of the things like you've listed where like they're cool emotes they're really cool emotes and like i just want people to understand i think there's a different air though there uh, a very different air than necessarily yeah no uh, it's a much more for again we were having this conversation the other day it's a much more friendly air like the competitive air isn't you know as strong as far as like i and, i got to beat this person i got to take him out type of competitors like sure it's there but it's more friendly. It's like even the people who I've seen um, not like each other, I've seen them resolve their issues much quicker yeah. than I've ever seen on YouTube. It's, it's like... The, because I think it's it's a very different thing where it's live as well. Like, especially within communities, news like that spreads quick. Like, super quick. Where, like... Well, why don't you like this person? Then people from their chat may come to your chat, and people from your chat may come to your their chat, and it becomes this idea of it. Be, it's so much more. It's so much more live, and I think that's the important thing. It's really easy to look at a video, leave a comment, being like, "You're a fucking scumbag," and you're this and you're that, and think that you're doing something like that. Oh yeah, I'm a champion of good here. But when you say that, and you can visibly see a change in the person. I think that that generally, like, whether you, if, unless you're trying to troll and legitimately just trying to attack somebody else, um, I think that visible change really does mean something to where, like, generally people also want to resolve things. It's really hard to look at somebody and see, like, what you're maybe what something like something that's negatively affecting them and just be like, yeah, that's I'm fine with that. No problem with that. Oh, well. Yeah, no. Uh it's it's some it's you know youtube it was cool for a time but as i you know started doing it and started watching more and more um it definitely did run its course a lot more now twitch i feel like twitch is more tv like because at least i, I don't it's like having cable to me yeah i don't have to watch the same type of channel whereas youtube i well i don't have to watch the same channel it's kind of hard to find something else because the guide is so fucked up that they don't really try to you know, like open your eyes to different things like i can easily navigate twitch and find things um youtube is just always going to push certain metrics to the top and i can make the point to people like <sighs> the idea that I think the because it's all live as well, the following tab is so much more useful than the subscription tab. Because like I'm looking at my following tab right now. I have 40 people live. But I could literally play there's I have every type of game from old school games all the way and handheld games to the top games on Twitch. Or games that I've watched for years and people play for years. And I, I say that because it's like Finding people on Twitch is you can also just look at it. Maybe you only want to watch. Uh, right now, a big game is um, Player Unknown's Battleground. Maybe you only want to watch that. You can search for games, and all you see are people that are live. Maybe you want people that are smaller than X number. You can search and find people of that size. And I think that that, that is important because those like being able to have that type of discoverability on twitch which is something that youtube used to have which is my the big thing like youtube used to be that easy but because like they took away the subscription feed is like a really easy way to see stuff and the website's been around for so long um i think that it became harder unless you follow like a super small number of people the idea yeah. that the only people i see are the people that are live right now even though i may follow I follow the same number of channels I follow on YouTube as I do on Twitch, I'm pretty sure. But they're never all live at the same time. But I can always catch their content whenever they are live if I want to. Um, yeah, I'm just looking now at like all the different things. 
I have things from everything from like straight up game developers, just people I like. And Twitch, like you said before, opens you up to. I started watching Twitch, I believe, for. I want to say League of Legends, a podcast, and a few YouTubers I like. That is how I eventually like there were YouTubers that I loved. They started doing stuff over Twitch. First off was uh, a podcast. Um, then I found D&D on Twitch, something that I've never fully played a campaign of. I've only ever done one shots, like singular sessions of. Um, and between those things, I found communities and games and people and met these people. And I think that's another important thing is when you meet Twitch streamers, you don't know them 100%, but you all, you have that little be like, yeah, when this thing happened or, yeah, I met you because of X, A, B, and Z. And they feel it feels a little bit more like you know the person because very few people can keep that up for like an eight hour cast of like, if my voice was 100% like, like, and there's nothing against that. But um, they're obviously like you get to see people, like you said, at the very start, a little bit more relaxed, but you also get to see so many different people. Of the people, I think I think Twitch is something like what is it, fourteen thousand or twenty thousand? I don't remember the number now. Are actually partnered, which is another reason why I would argue the mentality of everybody like dog eat dog doesn't exist. You still have to fight to get to partnership um, here on Twitch, whereas on YouTube, because everybody's like, I need that view because I would have made money off of it. There are people that think like that. Or that would have helped me get bigger. And if they're watching my videos, and that exists on Twitch, um, you can look at any of the uh, streamers. When it comes to the female streamer conversation that me and Black oh, had man. so many time, years and had so many times where people are like, well, no, she was people that are looking for their streams. And when I say female streamers, I don't mean all female streamers. What many people would call booby streamers. Um <laughs> There are people that are looking for that. Like, they're not going after your content, but they're not people that view it that way. But uh, seriously, why? 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 <laughs> like, if you're, if, if somebody, if you were looking for a steak and somebody offered you a, uh, and somebody looks, uh, looked for and gives you some chips, you're not going to necessarily just eat the chips if you really want a steak. Yeah, it, I'm sorry, but there's no porn channel on Twitch, people. So yeah. Not, well, and I think the internet has a well, porn. Well, you know what I mean. There no, is, when I, well, I was gonna say there are streamers that now. Well, they they yeah they've always been streamers that have pushed the limits. Um, we know. Uh, no, I mean, like, and there's. I'm not gonna. All I'll say is there are streamers that you can find on. Websites that you are supposed to be 18 years of older or to see after they finish their normal cast on Twitch. Are you serious? That is a thing now that is uh, become. Oh my a god. I guess. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. Whatever. You know, man. God, my people got to just. It's the internet. What, what am I saying? Can't stop people from being disgusted, but yeah, no, I love the well, fact it's, that it's also very smart. It's an evolution of a business model, and blah blah. blah. We can get into that in a different episode because inevitably that will end up in the news again. Yeah, somebody's going to do some booby things, and just dumb, just dumb. I, it's just incredibly. <sighs> But in I guess the original question had to do with like do I th do do you think that streaming is gonna ever replace Let's Plays? I don't think so. Because there's a lot of downtimes in streams. If you have never watched like a super long stream or one of the major streamers, there's usually some type of downtime in streams. Yeah. People are just joking around, doing whatever, blah blah. Gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, it's it's not just a hundred percent on. Whereas all of that is cut out of a let's play. So I always make the point, like, I guess you could say what it is. On TV, you end up always having a channel surf at some point. You inevitably get to that, like, channel surfing point of view. Um, if you then go to, uh, but if you go to someplace such as 
uh, on the movie theater, the movie is ready to go all in one shot. You never have to worry about something weird happening. Or like it's been cut, it's been made in a way to contain a very specific amount of information in a very specific amount of time. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting because I honestly think that it has, in a way, taken over um, the let's play, let's play as far as a form of entertaining. I don't think the let's play is ever going to go away because, um, well, one with Twitch rules, there's certain things like certain music heard, it gets muted. It's a little more stringent at times than YouTube. Um, so to watch the last play on YouTube, you actually have a better chance of hearing all the audio, um, if, if that's what you want. Um, but more importantly, I think let's plays now on YouTube are less about entertainment and more about information. Cause I know if I get stuck on something and I really don't feel like figuring it out, hell, I'll just go find somebody's let's play and find the point of the game where I'm at. It's like, oh, that's what he did, and turn it off. You know? So he'll get his view for that 30 seconds. But, yeah, I, I think that I think with Twitch, I like to watch people. Like, I'm sorry, but it's fucking hilarious to watch you want to throw your goddamn controller in, like, screaming bloody rage as you try a hundred and ten thousand times to kill something in Dark Souls. Watching you play games like Bloodborne, ne Neo, you need to get Neo back on because Neo, good lord, that was the greatest thing in the world to so watch you play that game. Um, yes, I do find enjoyment watching, and it's funny too because for a person who hates reality TV, I consume so much Twitch because I don't feel like it's that fake, phony, elaborated air type of um, drama like you see on regular TV. Like, seriously, guys, if you have not watched Euro Strix actually stream, you need to look at the links that I put in the description. Go to his Twitch and watch some of his video clips. I'm sure people have been clipping. That's another good thing about Twitch is the clipping thing. Um, it allows you allows it allows such a level of interactivity for the viewer now with stuff like clips, um, mm -hmm. stuff like bits, yep. things like that. So being able to clip the rage that you go through. <laughs> God, please it's please. awesome because I could just see people just throw links up left and right of you just losing your goddamn mind, and it's just Let's beautiful. Talk about that. You know, but it's 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 a, it's a good thing, and it's like again, it's a natural reaction. It's something that we yeah. all did, and like I was saying, as much as I hate reality TV, it's the type of reality TV I like because it's more relatable. I don't relate to fucking housewives of. At I don't give a fuck mean, about those. A millionaire that has I don't give a fuck about those like whiny ass rich hoes <laughs> and their <laughs> stupid dumb ass Dang. dumb fuck husbands Dang. who just like like just have the dumbest relationships where they do the dumbest stupidest ignorant shit. Like no, that's not entertaining. I don't watch. I feel like real, regular reality TV is people's way of feeling better about themselves. Because it's an easy way to say, well, my life might be fucked up, but I ain't fucked up like them. Whereas with Twitch, it's not about that. Granted, there are some people who you see who come into chats and are extra assholes because they think they're the greatest at a game. So they want But to I will say this. The racism shit has calmed down compared to five years ago. Five, four to five years ago. Yeah, it has. Because, you know, um... That's another good thing, topic to bring up. Um, we're going to have to write that down. Minority streamers, because that's another good thing. But yeah, I used to catch a lot of flat being live online. It's not as, I mean, mind you, I think sometimes it's cyclical. Yeah. 
because I think like right now is a good period of the year where you'll see it go up simply because of spring breaks. And you know, you got the little ignorant little fuckers. Oh, it's funny though. Who think that shit's funny. But it's funny though. And yeah, like this guy, he kept coming and said one person, it wasn't a racial thing. He just kept saying, like, you're mad, you suck at this game. You hate that I said that about you. I know you're mad. It's like you're horrible at trolling. All you keep saying is, I make you mad. You suck at the game. Look at you. Okay. You care. Like, no, okay. what? And dude's okay. like, um, no. <laughs> what what are you up? Okay. okay. Yeah, like, like, oh, I'm so mad. Ah. Yeah. And it's like with the racial thing, they'll come and they'll, and it's like the same thing. But come that's on. the funny thing. There's always different approaches. Cause my I old approach used to be like, is that really all you have to say? Like, I heard that when I was five. Like, like well, that's my thing. It's a natural reaction to me because seriously, at least try to be somewhat it clever. sounds really weird but like if you're gonna come at me about my race please be creative about it yeah be <laughs> creative saying coon and you know the n-word and all the other shit that people have been saying I'm, like how so many times that, porch yeah. monkey is old get, I'm like get the simpsons used old. that like years ago like you're not yeah it's no it's it's, it's a yes yeah, i also grew up in the 90s where like the 90s was the last little bit of time where they did not care about that. Like, you would get away saying some super stereotypical and borderline just what would be seen now as extremely racist stuff. You could just get away with it, and people didn't care because that was just the way it worked. Yeah, it's like, come on, guys, you're not hurting my feelings by saying that stuff. It's is you're, you're actually wasting your time and you're singling yourself out as an idiot. Oh, good job. Everybody knows you're a fucking idiot on the internet. Congratulations. This, and it's the sadness of your life, too. This is what you need to do is to go online and talk shit to people in hopes that you can make them upset. I think that's why that person like ended up reporting me, trying to say I was showing porn. <laughs> on Twitch one time. I mean, I've made the point to people all the time that it sounds it sounds really arrogant of a thing to say. And I don't I don't like I just but there's sometimes I've met people that are like, well, I don't get followers and so you shouldn't get followers because you're bad at the game. Like, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, and that I, again, that's another thing I like about Twitch. You don't necessarily need to be the greatest gamer alive. You just Vibe with people well, yeah, yeah, and you can have fun. You can have a following. Everybody that knows nothing gets black me or black. We're playing shooters. Look, our aim is oh fuck no! Like I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna we'll expose the- myself right now because I was just talking about Destiny in my fucking KD. Destiny's probably the highest KD I've probably yep. ever had. Yeah, first person shooter. Yep. That being said, my highest KD in Destiny is a point nine four. That is the epitome of my skill in a first-person shooter. But I'm not even that's even. I love about it is that people don't. There, if for the people, that, and that's the other cool thing is for the people that care about that, there will be the professional destiny destiny player that will merc everybody in multiplayer. Like they'll be putting out here with double-digit uh, KDs and pos- double-digit positive KDs, and it's just like, all right, cool. Like they're always. Yeah, like, I think it's a cool thing that you're good at this game. I. You're have, talking to somebody like, because I'm that person. Like when I want to see really, I watch. When I want to see really good League of Legends, guess what? I watch pros or former pros play League of Legends. When I just want entertainment, a lot of the times those guys are also super entertaining. But there's also people that if I want to watch it, I can just watch a smaller dude that maybe just be more entertaining to me. Yeah, no. I, mean, I think that's the big thing is like right now I think Twitch is just so much more of a smaller site where there's so much more accessibility and they've done a great job of giving you tools to find the things that you want. Like shoot, if you really don't care, there's ways to randomly search a channel on Twitch and just end up in somebody's chat. <clears throat> yeah. If you really don't care. 
and you'll see anything and everything. And before PlayStation, uh, before uh, Playroom got turned off, you'd literally see anything. Goodness, they they did uh, some things back then. PlayStation Playroom, PlayStation After Dark, Black. What do you know about that? Oh man, <laughs> that was the... when you get your ban- game banned off of Twitch. I kind of want to see what happened. Well, you got to think. Um, Ustream's still around, and Ustream still mm-hmm. is kind of shady. Until they get caught. Until they get caught. Uh, I had to turn on my TV now because I need to actually. Is that cable I hear? No, that was actually WWE Network. Fans don't to us. <laughs> Uh, but no, overall, I had like, to unfortunately, to unfortunately watch fucking WrestleMania. I think people have overreacted about YouTube as a platform. Um, and I guess the other thing that I could easily make the argument to people's views are very all different than mine all the time. Um, and I only say that because I a lot of the times view this from the standpoint of a content creator. I've created content on both platforms, and that's changed how I view some things. Um, yeah. And I think if you're just a viewer, you might think there's nothing wrong with YouTube. Like, there's no problems with the platform. You subscribe to who you subscribe to and are perfectly fine to just watch them. You don't have a worry in the world. Yeah, because as long as you get what you want out of it, you're fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, which is content. If I, I, look at my, I look at my actual, like... I'm looking at my feed now, and I can see there are multiple people. Like, I have the channel that posts five times a day. I have channels on YouTube that I just have for when I feel like watching something. So, like, for example, Black, I recently found the uh, Comic Storian, which is just a dude that uses panels and kind of brings in voices to tell in a, like, 30-minute or more, or but a fairly condensed format, storylines and comics, because I haven't been able to buy them and keep up with them like I used to. And it's stuff like that that I think works really well for YouTube. Doing that on Twitch would be actually pretty hard. And that's why I think that the platform itself won't ever die, even from a Let's Play perspective, because there are people that just want the, like, A, B, C, D, like, the bullet points. They don't want the entire, all the information, all the detail. Yeah. Hey, I just noticed something, by the way. There is no more you stream. What? <laughs> no, they got rid of you stream. Ah, they wouldn't do that. It makes sense because that was. Oh, you're talking about a PlayStation. Yeah, I was like, I was like, nah, you stream probably. Hey, they have daily motion, so there's that. It's about the same. It's but about yeah. The same. It seems to be less. Shenanigans. Like I, w- I don't know. I would make that point to just about anybody. I will. Like if you ever want to, like to anybody that ever wants to talk about Twitch, this this Twitch topic could literally take up three, four, five hours in and of itself. Because yeah, I mean, I like there's sub subject. Like I said, there's a diversity thing. Yep. Um, minorities, women, um, and how they're perceived, and those women that do things that you know get women in trouble because you got the booby streamers you got and i'd be even be like success and the different ways to or what constitutes success on twitch um even that conversation how you can grow if you want to grow how to stream like how to stream is not as simple as a lot of people it is simple it's very simple if you have a next generation console stream yeah, just go ahead and jump on and use the platform. And but get there, random you know, messaging you asking if you want to boost on Twitch. Yeah, so dumb. But no, there are things just like with everything. While it's easy to do from a perspective of okay, hit button and let's go. It's not something that's easy to do. From uh, okay, what can I do to make my stream 
more entertaining. What's the best way for me to do this? What's the best time frames? What's how engaging should I be? What type of audience and do I want a, to engage with? This is a lot could of be an entire sub episode that Black and I think event, inevitably we'll get to something like that yeah. because each one of those questions builds on itself and builds on to the like collective of uh, like well there's this and there's that and 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 there's like th- like turning on a stream is th- the simple part is to anybody that wants to start stream start streaming it's the stuff that comes after that depend and depending on what your goals are for streaming if you just want to stream then just stream yeah Don't worry like- about it just stream I would say if you want to stream, first determine why. Yep. Because once you figure out what motivation to stream, you have a clear idea of what you need to do or how you need to uh, let yourself up. I'll make a statement because it's a statement I've heard on for YouTube and Twitch and everything. You should never start doing this because you want to make it your job. Should you do it because you purely want to make it your job? No. Yeah. Because as somebody that does this mostly for fun and having worked a few different retail jobs, the retail jobs, while not necessarily fulfilling as much as this job, definitely have a lot less that you have to worry about. Um in terms of just the general like kind of job e uh, or just like things to do. Um, but if you do want to like ever think about doing this as a career, like there are paths to do it, and it takes a lot of work, learning, study, just as anything else. Learning does not mean you have to go to school for something, or studying does not mean you have to go to school for something. Education is not tied to school. All right. Uh, what it is is it's a matter of taking the time to find out and gather information to get to where you want to be, and to just know more about various things. That is what being educated means. So, uh, yeah, go do that. More people streaming is always a great thing. I invite any and everybody to stream. Yeah, just don't, don't be an idiot. If you want to have your titties out, though, I'm gonna recommend uh, my free cams or Chatterbait. Those might be better sites for you. <laughs> if you just like to sit around naked, it works. Trust me. Yeah, because you're not gonna really get far on Twitch. Um, well. I mean, to sit around naked. This is, well, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll last a day or two. Yeah, cleavage. We know that that'll get you. That'll that'll get you some views. What if I hate about to, if you want to have a nip slip or two, head on over to YouTube. YouTube is alright with a nip slip or two. Now we need to do a recommended streamers list. I I don't have you have you seen my following list? My it grows every single day. I could go like. We we could break it down by categories. Okay? Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure like we can. Suss I mean, if I went down my top five or ten, yeah, I could always. Yeah, we could suss out a good handful of people who we because we we probably we've mentioned a bunch of stream. Like, <laughs> it's really funny how when talks about streaming, like it's you, it's easy to mention other streamers because of how streaming works. Yeah, like right now, I'm watching DJ Knight. Right now, Black's got me watching a. a oh yeah, show. the setup. Yeah, I know it's <laughs> devastating. But you As watch well as- dumb shit like this on Twitch. It's oh funny. yeah, it's it's like I have, and that's the thing. I have like multiple streams going. I have a guy playing League. I have, as he said, DJ Knight. I have them building a f- a, a bar. <laughs> Why am I watching it? I don't know. I've watched people fill in spreadsheets on Twitch. Why? Look, you would have to ask me in that moment. You can't ask me after the fact. Hey, it's, it is. But get on Twitch, people. Yeah. Twitch is the future. YouTube is dying. It's dead. All the ads are pulling out. There's no money in YouTube anymore. Run. Like, let me stop. Nah. Before somebody takes, do not take any of that, those sentences. Those, those, I would say this, though. If you're. A long form content producer. Yep. Um, YouTube definitely is the place to be. But if you like to do 
live mm. entertainment. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get what you're saying now. Because I was gonna yeah. be like, I was gonna be like, like if you're documentary or like really long, like you said, long form, then I can see, yeah, definitely. But like, yeah, because I've I've been saying for a while now since their last big um, update, they're going towards wanting people to do more long form content because you can fit more ads it's more of a television like environment for them it's really funny that both tried to i think both tried to compete youtube and twitch both tried to compete in the others like for like area and then twitch eventually was like well we'll just kind of more focus on this live streaming thing and the video stuff won't ever really be the focus yeah it's like it's there now you can upload um, but unlike YouTube, who are still kind of like they don't push YouTube gaming or don't push their live streaming, they still make sure that you understand that it that that there there's reason to use it, and that long streams and sh- stuff would work. Yeah, I think the best thing if you're doing gaming content on YouTube is the stream because again, it becomes a long form format yeah. piece of content that's on your video because and i will tell anybody if you're still somebody that's into editing content you can still edit a stream it's just a matter of how you implement certain aspects into your yeah stream. but yeah the short five minute video things um i don't care how many views you get you're not going to well do as well as if you, you are do. a small if you are in a if you if this is not already at a point where it can be your job that will not affect like i can i can give you channels that put out five videos a day and while they don't get what I think a lot of people would consider ridiculous numbers of views, the numbers of views they get. Um, yeah, because it's more about view time anyway now. Yeah. Well, that's so. for YouTube Red. Normally but no, YouTube, I think it's seriously YouTube, YouTube, it's for regular YouTube because I've noticed you get I better. actually don't get as many views as I used to, but I still do the same well, numbers. You get, you get more play, well, now the thing is... Uh, YouTube search algorithm takes into account like view time, like actual view time. Yeah. Um, and that will place you higher, uh, which is interesting to say the least. But yeah, no, I get the same CPM getting a hundred less views. Yep. Then I do. This the funny thing is people say don't ever come into this stuff with a business, but when you start the only thing, the only reason the and this is why I said anyway, the only reason the analytics page exists is for business stuff. Yeah. It is purely just a here are some numbers for you to look at. Yeah. Like but no, it's important to talk to people about. about that, I think, because yeah. part of it is, you know, even if it is a love, it's an expensive love. And sometimes you have to look at the revenue that you can make to help support that hobby. Yeah. Is what, um, I don't think point to anybody. Anybody ask me any question about, well, I want to do this. Like, look, I've sunk way more money than I'm proud to admit into this yeah. thing. Not you're be, about not to sink be, $150 more. Oh, when that stream deck comes out, I cannot wait for that stream deck to drop. <laughs> like, it, and this is the thing. I, if, you're, if you're into YouTube, look, if you're, if you're a YouTuber <laughs> or in the Twitch it's great if you're techie, but it's also the worst thing in the world because there's always something that you can use. You you can use it. Now, should you? <laughs> should you is the question. Um, but I guess the the simplest. I mean, yeah. There's there's a lot of things. Don't go into this thinking that because I've had people that have approached me and asked me. And I've told them how much I have made because, yes, I've made money because ads do play on videos. And they're like, wow, you've only made that much, even though you hear big, nu- what sound like big numbers. I'm like, done. even with all this shit said and done, it is still part of the entertainment industry. I guess that's something I should push to people. This is still part of the entertainment industry. Movies, films acting any of that stuff it is still all a part of that industry and i say that because you think about how many people make it as actors when they go to hollywood how many people make it as professional ball players or whatever i think it's a little bit easier in these fields but still you have to to some degree uh no and you have to to some degree be willing to kind of 
I'm not explaining it. You have to be willing to recognize that to get where you want to, you have to you have to be willing to work at it. This is not a I wake up at eight and go to sleep at ten and everything works out perfectly fine. It's a go to sleep and wake up and if you want to do this, it consumes the rest of your life. Yeah. Just let it consume you, Black. Let it consume you. I wish I could. I just need it. I just need that that consumption to also <laughs> regurgitate some funds and then I will let exactly. it consume you all I need. Exactly. Because I do need to support myself. I do now, need to mean? make sure just, that just I'm put not. a bar on your screen that says uh, 10K or homeless every month. No, just put a bar on your screen that says 10K or homeless. It'll be fine. No, it doesn't work like that. I, I, I believe that it does. I wish it did. <laughs> I mean, I now, will you get money in that bar? That's a completely different question. But that, that's, again, that's another thing altogether on YouTube, the YouTube side of things. Or Twitch side of things as well. Of uh, people, please, please don't just don't don't just like be like I'm just gonna be a streamer now and I'm gonna be live the easy. Don't please, please don't like. I love you. You're special. But please don't. Don't do it. Please don't do it. But I think I've exhausted everything for right now. <laughs> When it comes to uh, Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, I mean, anything now, we would have to get into the whole specific, specific breakdown. Like, lesson one, Twitch this and Twitch that. And um, look up Professor Broman yeah. on YouTube. He has a video series that he did on Twitch and uploaded there where he basically gave people a tutorial on what to and what not to do as far as streaming and how to get into it, things that you might want to consider and all of that, you know, and that also would be a good that exists. I want that to be clear, clear as well for everybody that do not get into this profession at all. Profession, if you want to call it a profession or whatever you want to call it, do not get into this. If you don't want to like research and like be willing to do some type of work on your own without somebody telling you. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, shoot. I guess we're probably going to end up having to record something like that one day. I think it would be cool if we discussed that and just gave our feeling to reflect it. So, in fact, let me write that down because I don't mind, like I would I would love to talk about any of those. And, and if y'all if y'all do are watching this, whether it's on Twitter or on here, feel free to send us any questions about a specific topic. Yes, yeah, so you can hit me at black B L A K underscore Magus M A G U S. That's not how you spell black though. <sighs> Look, X X X Extreme Gamer Bro X X X. Don't tell me. What about my goddamn stream name? All the fucking XXX and hieroglyphics people putting their names now. Chop. Don't come for me on the internet. But um, you can also reach Eurostrix. Y O R U S T R I X. Hey, I could spell it. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. Yes, I spelled it right. I deserve an A. Just type me into Google and, like, what happens? Actually? Honestly, you come up. Pretty sure I did a pretty good job of, like, all of my stuff pops up. Yeah, if you type that into Google, um, you will find probably my YouTube, my Twitch, my Twitter. You'll find me. You'll you'll find me. <laughs> you find me literally on everything and things that I've been associated with Steam. So feel free to go ahead and click that and uh, type that in and uh, enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just go watch his Twitch stream and listen. If to if you me. ever hear me playing something like 
Dark Souls just and come enjoy yourself. Yes. You, you will probably punch you, will, you will watch a man go insane and what but I don't I, I win eventually. Yeah, eventually is a good way to put it. A very good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Very good way. Okay, let me stop thinking about it. And that goddamn um what was the name of that thing you were playing the other night? What? Oh, 64? God. Were you there when I played 64, by the way? Go watch. Mm. Like, Yes, I played a game. It was a rhythm game that is infuriatingly simple. That I, I literally couldn't. I was supposed to last a minute and four seconds, and I couldn't last past like 15. We won't discuss that. But yes, Dark Souls, the Ring City DLC. And I play things that make me want to punch walls. Yes, he does. He does. All right. Let's get through the rigmarole and then we're out of here because it's been you, you. longer than I thought it was going to be, as always, because we talk too goddamn much. Anyway. We go into lovely details. As always, you can find us here on YouTube, but if you don't want to watch the video on YouTube, you can always catch us on Stitcher, SoundCloud, hey. Google Play Music, and iTunes. Wow. The Wise Guy Gaming Sports and Entertainment channel. So if you want to listen to it in audio form, just pick one for one of those four mediums, subscribe, download the audio, and take it on the go wherever you want to go to. Um, you can always hit us up for questions at wiseguygse mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Again, we've given our personal um, Twitter handles that you can hit us up at. Please no dick pics. <laughs> Didn't, please, no. <laughs> but you can send the boobs. I appreciate the boobs. Um, Please be 18 or years of older, please. Yeah, we have, we have <laughs> mature boobs. Yeah, I have to clarify. <laughs> we need mature boobs, okay? Like, if you're not no. telling me to do that. That is of your own volition. If you choose, yes. to, do so, choose to do so. <sighs> Got to get all the legal stuff out of the way. For God's sakes, please, do no child pornography. Got to get the legal stuff out of the way. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, anywho. Um, you can also hit us on Twitter at WiseGuyGSE. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is about it. You'll see um, our links, uh, personal stuff in the description. So you can check us out on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff right there. All right. Well, as always, it's been a pleasure, good sir. It's been a pleasure. Yes, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed the conversation. And again, please. Feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, we'll see about maybe doing a Q and A um, if we can get enough questions. That would yeah. love to see what people would think, especially with E three coming up. Oh, I'm very see. curious as to what's on everybody's mind, what their expectations are, or what they want to know as far as what we are looking forward to and things like that. So feel free to hit us up with whatever questions you have. All right. All righty. So that is it. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the next episode. All right, guys. Laters. Peace.